is good, YouTube? Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis coming to you on a quick video. I wanted to let you guys know I got some new merchandise available, not just t-shirt anymore. I got different type of t-shirt, different type of shirts and logos that you can purchase on my spread shirt and also hoodies now. We have expanded and added more to the channel and more merchandise for the brand. Thanks for supporting. It will be in the description and the links will be in the comment section below. Thanks for helping me and supporting the movement. Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis, I'm going what is good youtube quinn way basketball analysis coming to y'all with another video for this weekend as it's getting ready to get closer to christmas you know still got to keep going i i, I got to keep going just like you guys keep watching so we're gonna talk about san antonio spurs not the team as they have been terrible this year but they are still in the playoff race and they're not too far from being back in the eighth seed or the seven seed, depending on how long they can go on the win streak. And the Spurs are right there. They're, they're a team that has been a huge disappointment. They have struggled to beat the good teams. They have struggled to beat the bad teams, which they usually destroy. But some way, somehow, the NBA is so balanced that every game is a tough fight. So there's no real favorite, especially after the fifth and sixth season each, each conference. Um, is open and those teams are all around the same area of production all around the same area as of talent and that's why the Spurs are stuck it's just because the NBA is a lot tougher more talent more better coaching more players got skill and the Spurs just can't keep up to continue to win at the elite level that they have done for the last 20 plus years but all good things must come to an end and the Spurs even if they get in this year, eventually they're going to have to fall off. And we thought it was, people thought it was going to be last year. I felt like even when they lost Lonnie Walker and DeJounte, that they still was going to make the playoffs. And they did. And I also picked them to have a great series against Denver, and they did. But, you know, don't count out the Spurs just yet. They, they can make a trade, somebody can step up, or they can just figure things out offensively at least. Or just become a better defensive team, even if that means changing up the rotation. They're right there. And they're a two, three game win streak away from being back in the playoff spot. Which means, you know, it's not over. It's not the last week of the, of the season trying to figure out who's going to get that spot. They still have time. They still have time to jail to figure things out. And go out there and try to get one of these playoff spots to extend their streak. Obviously, they won't win 50 games this year. But they didn't do that last year, and people still have respect for the Spurs coming into this year. And they played their heart out in the playoffs, and they did what they could with the talent that they had. With with all the injuries and things going on, they was able to figure it out. But one thing they haven't figured out is one of their free agents that was a big name that they really seemed like they needed was Damari Carroll. Damari Carroll was a guy that can play um, the small four position, the shooting guard position, and even some stretch four, depending on what lineups other teams throw out there. And he was a guy that was fearless. He, he can guard multiple positions, and he went out there and competed, and he gave you three-point shooting and the corner and at the top of the key, which is important spots for kickouts. When guys like Derek Wright and DeJounte Murray get to the – and Lonnie Walker, they get to the paint, they have somebody that can be a knockdown shooter in those areas and it's good to have that type of floor space and so they can get to the paint and so they can put pressure on the defense and make them stay honest and Amari Carroll is one of those guys that you don't want to leave open because he has been a um, decent shooter shooting 35.9 percent from three for his entire career so he always has been a threat um, from the three-point line as long as he has been healthy and that's important in an era where Guys won't, and teams won't, players that can play defense, guard multiple positions, and still be able to play off the ball, which is important, too, because you have DeMar DeRozan, one of the guys that like to handle a lot and create his own shot, but he has also become a better passer, and having a guy like DeMar Carroll could help that. But the problem with DeMar Carroll is he hasn't been able to get out of the jail of Greg Popovich um, rotation. He has been able to play major minutes. He hasn't even been a huge factor. This is a guy that was one of their biggest free agents this this offseason. But not only that, this was one of the guys that got paid $7 million this year, and he hasn't even eclipsed 25 minutes. 
So they really are low on him after being so productive and trying to find a way to fill out these wing positions and signing Rudy Gay. They ended up getting a little bit too much talent. I feel like they have so much talent across this roster, but they don't have any elite talent. And I think that that has caught up to them this season. It just they don't have that player that can really take them to the next level. Right now, they have the great pieces and the great roster and the great youth, but they haven't been able to find that guy that can really take them to, uh, you know, another level. And they thought it would be DeMar because DeMar was an all-star in the Eastern Conference. He, he was an all-NBA player before. He was a guy that averaged over 25 points a game before. And that's how, you know, this guy can take over. But he also became a better passer and decision maker before he left Toronto in that trade. So you would think that he can get better because he's not, you know, 35, 36 years old. He's, he, he has gotten better each season um, until he got to the Spurs where I feel like he still got better because he became an even better decision maker and playmaker. But his scoring went down. But they had more talent and they needed him to do less just because at the end of the day, they had other players on his team that like to score in isolation. Plus, they have a lot of shooters that if he can get the defense to break down, like Bellinelli and those guys can knock down shots and really get hot. Plus, they come off screens and they need somebody to set them up or get them the ball. And DeMar was able to do those things. But Damari Carroll hasn't been able to figure it out. Um, I really want to know what my subscribers think that do you think that Damari Carroll is a guy that can still be a productive guy? Do you think he can be a starter on the right team? Or let's keep it real. Is he washed up at this point in his career? You know, he still probably can't shoot threes, but his defense is no longer his strong suit. His offense has never really been there. He never been a great creator off the dribble. He never was a great mid-range scorer. Um, to the extent that you want him to be if you're going to give him that type of money that Toronto did. And he just got worse and worse because of the injuries. The knee injuries really destroyed his career. It sapped him out of his mobility. It sapped him out of his athleticism and his first step. And now he's just a grounded player that only can really do so much. And he is just another body. But you look at the Spurs, that's a contract that could really have kept Bertans. That's seven, eight, nine, ten million that you could have gave Bertans. A guy that has shown that he can get hot. A guy that's shown that he can knock down threes and really be a great threat. He showed that even with the San Antonio Spurs, he was showing that he was one of the best shooters in the entire NBA. But instead, they gave a lot of money to these wings, and they were trying to get money to Morris, too. And they ended up giving money to Rudy Gay and Damari Carroll. And now those guys haven't stepped up to the level that they needed them to be. They haven't been no weapons coming off the bench that they needed. And now they're in a situation where they have a lot of talent, but now they got to figure out what direction and what type of trade do they need to make to get out of this you know, mediocre to bad team. And like I said, they have the talent. It's just about figuring out who will take them to the next level, who can change this culture when it comes to the season that they're having to turn them into more of a threat, turn them back into the Spurs that this is a team in the playoff you don't want to play. You know you're going to have to have a hell of a series. You know your big, your big player is going to have to go out there and step up. If not, the Spurs are going to just out-execute you, get easy shots, play the game, play the scheme, play, you know, team basketball. And I don't really see a lot of teams that can deal with that if they can upgrade some of this bulk for more talent. And I don't say bulk to be disrespectful because a lot of these guys like Demari Carroll, Demari Carroll can't even get minutes because they're so loaded at a lot of these positions. And it may be in the best interest to trade a lot of these guys to get that guy that can really be a franchise cornerstone um, you know, as long as the Spurs are relevant. Right now, DeMar and LaMarcus, they look like stars. They haven't been playing at that all-star level that they need to play to get this team over the hump. And like I say, even if they do make a trade, you don't want to be a team fighting for the 6th, 7th, 8th seed. You want to be a legitimate contender, not just a team that just playing to make it to the playoffs. The Spurs has been known as consistent. The Spurs have been known as dominant. The Spurs have been known for teamwork, hard play, and trusting and believing and, and letting players do what they do, but also getting the best out of those players and developing those players. They still have done a lot of that. The problem is they haven't been the real threat 
since they traded Kawhi Leonard. And since he had the injury to Zaza, they had no real shot of being the legitimate championship team these last couple years. And that's a spot that we really don't see San Antonio in as they have been a threat for the last couple years. Even if they got early exit, a lot of players and people still respected them as a real challenger in the Western Conference. And now we're trying to find out, is this team going to make it to the playoffs? Is they really good? Should they make a trade? Should they give on give up on LaMarcus? Should they give up on DeMar? Nobody knows anything about what direction they should go for. And even if they feel like they should get rid of these players, nobody is out here telling you, what do you get? How do the Spurs? You're not just going to give LaMarcus and DeMar DeRozan away for nothing. You want something back in return. You don't really want to keep getting picks because you still want to be competitive as long as Greg Popovich is there coaching. You want to be able to put some legitimate talent around him so he can still be able to compete for a championship, even if it don't look like he's in that, you know, roster wise in that area. Just like this year, you still want him to have a competitive, respectable roster that can go out there and get W's, not just to be coaching and doing a season to retool or rebuild. Retooling, not that bad, but they have enough talent to get that player. I can understand that that player is not available right now, but when you lose a superstar franchise player in finals MVP and one of the best top five, even if you might say he's the best player in the league when healthy, that's a big loss, especially because you haven't been able to get any talent of that level since. So I really hope RC Buford figures it out. I know he's not rushing. I know he's not panicking. I know he's not, you know, getting going crazy uh, where the Spurs is right now. Because, like I said, they're a two, three game win streak away from being a seventh or eighth seed in the Western Conference. But, like I said, at the same time, this is a season where you're starting to figure out and you're starting to see what the Spurs really are when healthy. And that's not good enough to be a contender, it's not good enough to be a, a lock for the playoffs. And that's something we have never said about the Spurs in the last 20 years. And it's, re it's relevant now because this is the team that they have. And Greg Popovich is still there, so it's not the coaching. So I really want to see what direction they go in. I really want to see how they approach the trade uh, market and the trade deadline. I really want to see, you know, what type of player are they going to look for to take this team to another level and get them right back in a championship contention? Or are they going to just be fine being a borderline playoff team or just risking missing the playoffs in general just because, you know, some guys come off their contract, they have a little bit more cap space, and then they just figure out how they're going to build the roster, you know, next season, in the off season, or even if they just make a trade that we don't see happening, don't see coming because they do have the picks, they do have the players, and they do have the youth to really get a deal done to get somebody good. Like I said, the only problem is we don't see that player available, which is unfortunate for them. But at the same time, you know, you can't have everything you want. You can't get your cake and eat it too. But let me know what you guys think about Damari Carroll. Is he washed up? Is he done? Is he just on a bad team? They're not utilizing him the right way? Or did the injuries in the, his game fall off so bad? You know, as he is in his mid-30s, he still is losing a lot of his athleticism outside of his knees. And, you know, he's never really been a great contributor unless he's hitting threes. And that is his biggest value right now. It's his length, his, his, athlete, his body, and his shooting ability. And the Spurs have a lot of that already on the perimeter with this current roster. Like I said, this is a team that's deep at a lot of positions, but that might be more of a flaw and something to brag about when you have no elite talent on your roster. But let me know what you guys think about the Spurs, about Damari, and how their season is going. And if you're a Spurs fan, let me know if you're panicking. Let me know if you feel like y'all should rebuild. Let me know if y'all should just stand pat and, and try to keep as much talent as y'all can until that superstar comes up. Or let me know if y'all just ready to rebuild, accept that y'all ain't the same, Except that this dynasty has got to go to rest for a little bit, then it can rise in the future. But whatever you think, let me know. I read every comment. Thanks for supporting. Thanks for watching. Thanks for liking. Thanks for commenting. Quinn Wade, that's when I'm going. Like this video. Check out my older videos on my channel. I have many playlists. I break down rookies. I break down players. I break down summer league. I do cover the draft, and I got a mock draft up already. Not only that, I do podcasts, and I also talk about the game of basketball, whether it comes to 
summer league, free agency, trade deadline, buyouts, and also I cover top 10 discussions and stuff like that. So you like this type of video, you like the NBA, check out my older videos and my playlists. I enjoy making these videos. You guys enjoy watching. I'm going.